Hi, I'm Chris Menard, and I'm here to tell you about a wonderful craft we're going to do. Um, first of all, I just want to talk to you. Um, we have a new book talk, so uh, as you know, adults can join the reading club. So I hope all of my crafty adults join the reading club. Today, we're going to do a watercolor card and forget all our worries. Um, this is a Parrot in Paradise watercolor, and we have kits. You gotta uh, have kits at the major libraries. It's going to be a watercolor card, an envelope. Um, we're doing something unique. We're putting uh, watercolors on a piece of foil. We have tubes of watercolor and we squirted them on the foil. So that's how we're gonna try and do this during this pandemic. Um, the first step that we're going to do is we're gonna collect the items we need. So you gotta have your kit. You also need a couple of pencils. Maybe we can do a tight chop shot. Hi. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get our kit and we're going to take out our um, our pattern and our card. And we also got to collect some supplies from our house. We need a couple of pencils, an ultra fine point marker, a couple of paint brushes. These are round paint brushes, and um, there's one. The larger one is a nine and the smaller one is a five and you can see how they're tapered you can get them in a set or you can buy them individually at the craft stores or the big box stores or even the dollar stores also i have some washi tape because i'm going to tape down my pattern and my card when i'm painting so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pencil and i did this to save time we're going to put uh it um, on the back of a white sheet of paper, the pattern, take the pattern, turn it like this, and to save time, I already did it. And we're just going to rub and put a lot of graphite on there so we can transfer. This is how we're going to transfer our picture to our cord. And to save time, I already did it, but I'll just show you what I did is, like I said, I rubbed it on there, then I took it and I paper clipped it. Oh, I forgot to tell you to get paper clips. We need paper clips. And we're going to paper clip our pattern to our watercolor cord. And we're going to take our other pencil, which has, should have a sharper point. And we're going to trace, and I did that to save time. We're going to trace all of our pattern onto the cord. Sometimes you don't know if it traced or not. So if you take a little peek and then put it back, trace some more. Just make sure you have it all traced. Like I said, to save time, I already did it. So here we have our parrot with some, I guess some palm leaves and some other leaves and the parrot's on a stick and here's the horizon. Uh, and it's a very colorful parrot, as you saw right here. And we're going to start with the red paint. So over here, we have the top of the bird, the leg and a stripe right down the tail. So we're going to take our larger paintbrush, dip it in water, get our little palette here. I'm going to move it over and we're going to soak our red and I'm going to take some off. Oh, I forgot to tell you, you need paper towels. Oh, please get some paper towels. I'm checking it to see. It looks pretty red there and I'm going to carefully, oh, need some more. I'm going to carefully paint all of the bird's feathers. Now, as you can see, it's not real bright right now, and when it dries, it's going to be even lighter. So I'm going to dry it with a hair dryer. You might want to just let it dry and go do something, read a little bit of a book, or use a hair dryer and dry it in between the colors because we don't want all the colors running into each other. So I'm going to paint all of this. Now, if I do like too much, it's too dark, I can take my paper towel and gently, you know, kind of soak it up. It's up to you. I like to do it light and then come back with another coat of paint, another wash or paint, a glaze. And since I'm doing a large area, I'm using my large brush. And when I do a small area, I'm going to use my small brush. But this one has a point, so I can get right here. 
right there on the top of the bird's head. And they kind of have a flat head, don't they? These kind of parrots. And I found the photograph and I sketched it. So I did my research. Okay, so also this is the leg of the bird right here. And then right in the middle, there's a stripe that's red. And we're going to stop for just a second so that I can go dry this. And so I'm back after drawing it. And um, I have two cups of water. forgot to get y'all to do that too. Oh. Um, one cup is my dirty cup and one cup is my clean cup. So I'm going to do the red some more. As you can see, it dried kind of light. So I'm going to put some more red here there on my paintbrush. And then I'm just going to put a darker coat of red. The beauty of watercolor is all the different uh, puddling of the, the paint. So some of the parts of the bird are going to be darker. And some of them are going to be lighter. And it kind of, the variation is very nice. Maybe leave it kind of pinkish right here because well, maybe the bird is the lights kind of hitting off the bird. No, I can't tell, but oh well, now it's getting covered up. Oh well, it's art. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we'll do the leg again. Yep, that's kind of getting too much, so I'm going to wipe a little bit of that paint off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to do the stripe again here. And again, we're going to stop so I can dry that. And now, after this is dried, we're going to paint the four yellow feathers here. And we're also, to give some variation, we're going to put a little bit of yellow before we put green for all the leaves. So, I'm going to use my small round brush. I'm going to get my yellow on my foil. And I'm going to rub some of that water in there. I'm going to test it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So, the yellow right here. And you should, we're going to have a paper set of instructions with colored photographs. So, that'll help too, besides looking at this video. So, there's four yellow leaves. Excuse me. Feathers. And we're going to take a little bit of yellow and we're going to put it just a little bit here and there on those green leaves. Just to give some color variation to the green. And again, we're going to stop and use the hair dryer. Okay, so let's add a little bit more yellow, and you know what? I forgot to do the eye. The little teeny tiny eye is yellow, and I'm going to use my small brush. I'm also going to wipe a little bit of the extra water off, and a little bit of yellow here. And I'm not going to go over the leaves. I'm just going to go over the feathers. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that eye. Oh, it's right there where I might want to put my hand, but I'll be careful. Now we're going to do the yellow here. And because the blue, the dark blue doesn't touch the yellow, we're going to do that and then dry everything again. So the tips of all the bird's feathers are a dark blue, and that's going to be here. Here's the darker blue. You can... Okay, so we're going to let the yellow dry for just a little bit and because the blue and the yellow don't touch we're going to use the dark blue to paint the tips of all the feathers as well as the tail feathers and it's kind of hard to tell on the foil but the dark blue is right here red red blue yellow so we're going to use i guess a smaller brush and rub this very bright cobalt blue um, different people are going to have various colors of blue. It just depended what we had. And I'm going to test it right here. It's a nice, brilliant blue. And we're going to paint the tail feathers here. I see how it's a nice, bright blue. And 
I know it's kind of hard to stay in the lines, but after we're finished with this and it's all dry, we're going to take that very fine point magic marker and we're going to trace it. And I promise you it's going to look like a million bucks. Like you won the lottery and you're in paradise with the parrot. And you see how the, uh, the paint puddles and sometimes it's darker than others. It's kind of the beauty of it. And let's see, I just need to check right here. Yep, that's a, a blue feather right here. Oh, and I have too much on my little paintbrush here, so I have to be careful. I don't want to paint over the um, where the other feathers are going to be. Of course, it's art, and if I mess up, you know what? I mess up, we'll fix it. And then all these... The lower feathers are all going to be blue. Uh, and again, I got too much blue on my paintbrush. So let me kind of go over here. And kind of spread that around. The good part about the round paintbrush is the, the, the point. And you can use it and do a medium size area, or you can do a very tiny area using the point. And again, there's a lot of paint there, so I'll do this. So we will stop and dry the blue and the yellow. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, we're going to paint the green leaves before we go over the blue. So here's our green. It's a nice bright green. So we're going to put our water in there with a small paintbrush because the leaves are small, so we need the smaller paintbrush and kind of test it. It's a nice bright green. And remember, if you don't get it quite in the lines, it doesn't matter. Just make your own pointed leaves there. And since we put some yellow, we're going to have a, a little bit of variation where some of the leaves are going to be kind of yellowy green and some of them are just going to be a darker green. Makes it look more natural. I was going to use the washi tape and tape it down on my clipboard, but... I like moving the picture around. It depends what you want. If you want, you can use some washi tape and tape down your picture so it doesn't move and kind of tilt it. Okay, so we're going to stop and dry the green leaves. So let's go and paint the leaves a little bit darker green. Some parts can be darker green and some of them you can leave some of the yellow showing. And I'm using my small paintbrush again because it's a small area and I can use the point to get the very tips of those leaves. I guess it's kind of like a palm tree. I need a little bit more of this green. Watercolors come different ways. Um, we're using two watercolors. We got from a supply company called Dick Blake, but you can get them locally. You can also get them in a pan. I forgot to bring my pan of watercolors, but that's what you normally see with kids. But you want to get a little bit better quality. Okay, and then we're going to use the big paintbrush, clean it off. Oh, I need to clean it a lot. It still has some red on it. And I'm going to paint the blue feathers because they're not touching the green. So, and I can do that at the same time and then dry everything. So, we're going to test our color. And it doesn't really matter. Um, we're not trying to get a flat color like we do in acrylic paint. I want some of the uh, feathers to be maybe a little bit darker than others. And you want to leave like a little bit of it unpainted and just have the one coat. It kind of gives the feathers a three-dimensional look. See how it, it puddles a little bit, which is the beauty of watercolor. OK, 
Okay, and guess what? I forgot to do the green feathers. As you can see, there's green feathers right below the yellow and above the blue. So now this last one is just red and blue. So all the others here are going to be green, whatever we have left. So I'm gonna take my small paintbrush, make sure it's clean, wipe it off and get my green again. We're gonna do this and we're going to do the bird's beak and the uh, cloth next. Okay, so let me get this. Oh, need a little bit more water here, a little bit more paint. Okay, we'll just let that dry. That's not near our beak. Oop, I mean our claw in our beak. And you can see the claw is a grayish color, whereas part of the beak is black. And like I said, you should have, we will have instructions inside your kit that you can see a larger picture. So let's get some of our Payne's Gray. The Payne's Gray is below the yellow. And it looks like black, but Payne's gray is sort of a bluish black. It's a nice color. It has enough water. It looks gray. If it has just a little bit of water, it makes it look kind of black. So we'll get some of the Payne's gray right here. Test it on our paper towel. So we can get like a um, very light gray right here for the claw. And I'm using my small paintbrush because it's a small area. And I'm going to get a little bit more of this Payne's gray. So the, the whole bottom beak is very dark. Whereas the top of the beak is just the um, bottom part right here. Although I'm going to use this fine point of it and just kind of go around right here and just a little bit like this okay so we're gonna stop and dry so let's paint those green leaves again let me wash my brush well make a mixture of the green I said leaves I meant feathers so I'm going to test that color and we're gonna paint these feathers again do we do the feathers? We're going to do the stick, a branch rather, that the parrot is on. It's not touching anything. So after we finish doing these few feathers, I'm gonna wash that brush twice and I'm gonna get the raw umber, which is a brownish color, a dark brown, and add some water, make a light wash, there we go, test it out, okay, and we're going to paint the stick that the bird is on, rather a branch, and we can do a light painting of it, and we can always go back and make it darker. I'm going to go around the claw, and it comes out on the other side of the bird right here. There we go. Um, I don't think we need to add anything to the beaks. It's dark enough, like our oops, our original, which I, I'll, I put red on there. Oh, no. I'm going to um, take a paper towel, get that color off. So if you make a boo-boo, wet a paper towel. And let's see, let me move this over to the side. This is our original one. And I'm just gonna try and get that red off. It's art. Sometimes we have mistakes. So now we have kind of a more rosy, rosy sky. That worked. Let me put this one off to the side, away. Okay. Uh, we need to dry because we're going to start working on the water 
in the sky. So let's dry. We're going to work on the water now. Um, before we've been doing wet, the paintbrush is wet and the paper's dry. Now we're going to put water for the water. Ah, that makes sense. And we're going to paint wet on wet. So we have this beautiful blue, like a parakeet blue. And I guess I'll use my small paintbrush, although I might trade up and get the large one for the area. But so I'm just going to take some clean water and I'm going to put it down over here on the water area, going between my dried leaves and my branch and get some of this blue. I'm going to do really, really light. There we go. And it's going to kind of bleed in there. Uh, let me put a little bit more. And we're going to go horizontal. I have to go right here around the leaves. And if a little bit of the paper shows through, that's fine. It's watercolor. That's kind of the beauty of it. I put dark. That's okay. I'll just kind of blend it here and blend it there. Okay. So, let's see. There's a little peaking right here. So, let me wet that. And in this area over here, because that branch is kind of up high. We've got enough water here, doing wet on wet. And so we're gonna try and get about the same color of blue as we have over here. So let's see, we're gonna go around and try and make it go horizontal. And a little peeking of the blue right here. And like I said, if a little bit of the white shows, that's fine. It's the beauty of watercolor. Okay, so we're going to stop and dry. Okay, time to do the beautiful sky. It's a large area and we want to do it a lighter blue with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of pink over here at the horizon. And so we want this to be the darker blue, which it is. And this one is going to be a lighter blue. And again, uh, we're going to use the big brush because it's a very large area. And clean that brush and make a really, really light wash test that. Oh, and you know what? Excuse me. We're going to do wet on wet again. So before I do that, I'm going to wet some areas. I'm going to start at the top here and I'm going to wet it all around the leaves. I'm going to put not a whole bunch of water, but a lot of water. And I want it to spread. So here we have our little bit of blue. Adding more water. And just kind of letting it puddle here and there. Like I said, that's that's the beauty of watercolor. Little accidents, little creative accidents. And we want it to be lighter. I'm getting some red off the top of the, the parrot's head. Well, that'll just be blended in. So let's put some more water using our large brush all around here. And we're going to take a little bit of red, not too much, and kind of put it here like the sun's setting. Oh, too much. What are we going to do when we have too much? We're going to take a paint. A paper towel and just kind of soak it up and kind of blend it in there. And maybe a little bit of yellow. We have our yellow here. And maybe a little bit of yellow there. And kind of blend all that in and pull it up going up towards the sky. Maybe I want to add a little bit more blue up here just to get some variation in color. I like it pretty much. Let's dry it. 
I want to do a little bit more variation to the branch. I think I want to put a little bit more brown and then maybe some Payne's Gray. So let's take our small brush and just kind of get some more of that burnt umber and just kind of paint a little bit underneath here and around the the bird's claw and up here just to kind of give it some variation and then maybe take a little bit of Payne's gray and uh, add it right here. And you can make it look like a, a tree branch and variations in color. Uh, looks good to me. So we're going to dry this and then next we're going to get our Sharpie after it's completely dry and then we're going to add some details with that Sharpie. So let's stop and dry. Okay, so now we're going to take our ultra fine Sharpie. If you don't have that, you can use a regular ballpoint pen, black. Ah, this one's kind of hard to open. So um, I don't want to cross it. So I'm going to start at the bottom here. And I like to sketch as in like this. I like it to look like this. Some people like a bold line. It's up to you. I like to do it like it's pen and ink. I used to do that with a uh, pen that had ink in it that you added to it. Okay, and so I'm just going to go around here. There's the feathers. And as I said before, there's going to be instructions so that you can more clearly see this. I'm going to go around all the feathers. And just keep going all around there. I don't want to rub it with my hands, so let me get these right here before I go any higher. And then I'll turn it a little bit and get these leaves. And I'm going to sketch it in there, make a line right here. And then right here, I'm just going to go around this branch. I like the, the sketchy effect there around the claw. And I'm not doing everything, I'm just kind of going around it. I'm going to put a few lines at the bottom of the branch, just to show that that's the bottom of the branch. Okay, I'll go around the green leaves now. It's hard to believe that something as beautiful and colored, all the different colors, a bird lives in this world. It's just beautiful. I found out what kind of parrot it is and now I have forgotten. I'll have to look it up and put it in the instructions. And then I'm going right here. And then I want to do the horizon. And I want to do the very sketchy horizon right here. Just to kind of give it more contrast. It's continuing going right here and over the side of the parrot's back in these leaves here. And this one I'm going to go all the way up. And around the parrot's face. And around the eye. So it has a little bitty round eye with a dot in the middle. And let me go around the beak. And the top of the head. There we go. And the parrot, I don't know if you can see it on here, but uh, it has like little wavy lines around the eye. I'm just going to put some little dots around there. And we're almost finished. Let's finish with this palm tree right here. This cord comes with an envelope so you can send it to a favorite cousin or your grandmother or an auntie. And we're finished right there. But before we completely finish, let's flip it to the back and you can put your name 
and the date. So it's June 2020. And you can put your name or your initials. I'm just going to put my initials there. And we're finished. Sometimes it gets a little warped. And if it gets warped, what you can do is put just a little bit of water. Right here, not a lot, just a little bit. Put a paper towel, put another paper towel, no, that's not clean, on top of it right here. Be very careful, not too much water, and put some heavy books on top of it. Ah, and talking about books, I want to show a few books that the library has on watercoloring. So we'll stop for a second. The library has many different books on watercoloring, and if you look um, on the library's website and you don't find the one you want you can get it from another library so if it's at you're at East and it's at North they can ship it over to East here's another one it looks pretty good and easy and another one so we have lots of great books and don't forget that you can join our summer reading club even if you're an adult we have a lot of children joining it and teens and now we have one for adults. We've been having that for several years. So please come drop by the library and pick up your kit with your watercolor card and your foil paints and the instruction sheet that will be in it. And watch our YouTube video. Thanks for watching.